we begin tonight with another story we've covered on Checkpoint. What's been called an exodus of dancers from the Royal New Zealand Ballet. The RNZB, uh, the RNZB itself insists things are better there and happier there than the media is reporting. They call recent speculation about their culture and employment practices troubling and unfair. But this afternoon the board announced it had asked former Deputy State Services Commissioner Doug Craig to conduct an independent review of the RNZB's employment processes, in particular its processes for responding to and managing complaints by employees. I spoke to board member lawyer Isaac Hikaka about what they're doing and why. Well there are two aspects to the announcement today. The first is that the board is cognizant of the issues that have been raised uh, through the media and has asked the, a former Deputy State Services Commissioner, Mr Doug Craig, to conduct an independent review of the RNZB's employment processes, in particular its processes for responding to and managing complaints by employees. And the second is that the board is undertaking to look at new ways for artists and the company to have a say in the strategic decisions involving the RNZB. And we'll be seeking the views of dancers and others in the sector about the best way to achieve this. The way we deliver this is still very much open for discussion, but the commitment to give dancers an ongoing opportunity to be heard is serious and will happen. And the people we've been speaking to over the past few days will be delighted to hear both of these things. If we go back to December of last year, so exactly 12 months ago, an investigation was underway over allegations of conflict between dancers and the artistic director of the Royal New Zealand Ballet. The board had hired a facilitator to mend the relationship. RNZ had learned that 12 dancers and other staff had left the National Ballet Company. Three or four left directly because of the way they were treated by the former artistic director, Francesco Ventriglia. This isn't new, this stuff, is it? No, the, these are very much legacy issues as we understand them, as you've identified. The board, when these were raised at the time, strove to deal with those issues properly and believed that the proper processes were appropriate robust and best practice. But we recognise, given the ongoing interest in and issues raised, that these concerns should be addressed. And so that is why we have commissioned the independent review of the processes adopted. OK, have things improved under Patricia Barker? Yes, we think that under Patricia Barker the company is looking forward to a really bright uh, future and it's a future that is one that really engages with dancers and one that puts New Zealanders on stage. So I was on the interview panel that interviewed Patricia Barker when she applied for this position. And I can tell you the first thing she raised in the very first interview was about her concern for dancers, dancer safety and dancer support. And she made it clear to the board that dancer pastoral care was a top priority for her and that aligns with the vision the board has for the Royal New Zealand Ballet as being a place where dancers are supported and uh, all, actually all artists in the company and all managers in the company are supported okay, and it's a safe okay. workplace. Right, well that sounds fantastic. There are 41 photos of dancers on your website currently. How many of them will be with the RNZB this time next year? I'm not sure of the exact answer to that question, sorry John, because I, I can't off the top of my head remember. How many are leaving? How many 40? dancers are leaving, have just left or will leave at some stage during the next year? I believe, I believe the number is 12. I can't of course speak about what dancers will be doing next no, year, just absolutely. as in a... So, so just, no, hold also on, no, just, okay. sorry. Abs no, fair enough, you can't. And I'm not asking you to crystal ball gaze. So let's mm. restrict ourselves to statement of fact. 12 dancers from 31 are leaving. This is not stability. This is not the lovely stuff you were talking about a minute ago. This seems on the face of it to be the opposite of that. Well, the board was very concerned about the numbers and so what we did was we asked for an investigation to be made into how these numbers compare with companies that are similar to the Royal New Zealand Ballet, namely touring ballet companies. And it turns out that these numbers are actually very similar to the level of turnover you would expect from touring companies because there is quite a unique nature about the Royal New Zealand Ballet and that is that it tours. It tours across the country because one of its mandates, and it's been part of the 
goal and vision of the Royal New Zealand Ballet from when it was first formed was to bring the national company to New Zealanders. And of course that has effects on uh, the ability for dancers and other artistic staff to uh, get comfortable and settled. And so there is a much higher turnover in a touring company than there is in a non-touring company where all the ballets are performed in the same city and so there is much greater stability. Absolutely. And, 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 and the, uh, the idea of being a New Zealand company is very important. I've got the strategic plan here. Your mission uh, is very short to become a compelling expression of New Zealand's creative spirit. Goal number two, we will be recognised as an inspiring New Zealand brand. So let's go back to those 31 dancers. How many of them are New Zealanders? I believe the percentage is around 42% so uh, less New than Zealand half. or New Zealand trained. New That's Zealanders right. or New Zealand trained. So, yes. okay, you will be an inspiring New Zealand brand and a compelling expression of New Zealand's creative spirit. Your artistic director is an American. She has hired two new ballet masters, both from the same company in America, Grand Rapids Ballet in Michigan. That's right, isn't it? That's correct. And that is usual in these kind of environments, it's, it's often done in the ballet world, where a new person comes on and brings with them some core support people who they know will be able to deliver the uh, goals that they have for the company. And those Ex goals... Ex except the goals, Isaac, are to become a compelling expression of New Zealand's creative spirit. We will be recognised as inspiring a New Zealand brand. I'm not giving you a hard time here, but you get five million dollars of taxpayer funding per annum to be the Royal New Zealand Ballet Company. 42% of your dancers are New Zealanders. The top three people in terms of the creative management of the company are from the same ballet company in America. Is this at odds with your rhetoric? Well, two points I think I'd address on that, if I may. The first is that one of the goals is to bring that 42% higher. And that's something that Patricia Barker was very uh, strong on in her interviews and something that has got the strong mandate of the Isaac, board. Isaac, so, so strong, is so strong that she imported two ballet masters from her own company in Michigan. What her, in terms of the ballet dancers, what we are looking to do is have Patricia Barker, and indeed she is doing this and has done this, she is approaching New Zealand dancers who are dancing overseas and inviting them back to the company. So she is seeking to bring back dancers from overseas back so they can come home and dance in front How of New Zealand. How many has she got so far? How many is she bringing back? I'm not sure the exact numbers now, but there are certainly ones and the announcements will be made about those in the future as they come on board. But this is also an ongoing aspect. It is an ongoing goal to bring dancers back from overseas. But also there's an ongoing goal to increase the uptake, if you will, of dancers trained in New Zealand and New Zealand dancers into the Royal New Zealand Ballet at its first instance. We've been speaking over the past two or three days and you are very reassuring and I'm sure the things you announced at the beginning of the interview really will be welcomed in good faith by everyone who knows and loves the Royal New Zealand Ballet, whether they are people who watch the Royal New Zealand Ballet or whether they are part of the company. But we have been speaking to people and I just have been having conversations at length with people who are part of the Royal New Zealand Ballet or close to it and they say it is a very difficult place to be at the moment and the stability that they had hoped for because Patricia Barker is the third artistic director in six years has not eventuated. Well, to address that, the company is very concerned to have a safe workplace and what we have seen is a lot of messages of support from dancers uh, for Patricia Barker saying that they have seen a significant improvement under her management. And the impact of the media stories are very high. We have had only this morning dancers go in tears, dancers who are currently with the company go in tears to the artistic director because they are concerned about what they see as attacks in the media by the uh, by the media against the company that they love and love being a part of. So you are saying that the issues that were behind the complaints against Francesco Ventriglia have been dealt with or are being dealt with, 
that this is a happier and more stable company that truly reflects the values you talked about at the beginning of this interview? It is a company, yes, and it's a company that looks to continue to grow in that direction, to continue to have New Zealanders' stories told on stage by New Zealanders and to bring the ballet to New Zealanders. Isaac, we would have loved to have spoken to some of your dancers. We would have loved to have heard from anyone who was able to speak about how much they love being at the RNZB and how much it has uh, improved under Patricia Barker. Why were people told not to talk to us? Why were people explicitly told not to talk to the media? That, that is a standard um, practice within most organisations, uh, so that I don't think there's anything unusual about Except that. Except it, it's been reiterated explicitly over the past few days, hasn't it? Uh, I believe it has, because... So, so isn't it, this it, it, at odds with the sense that people want to tell us how good it is? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't quite understand the question. Well, if you have people coming to Patricia Barker and saying, we love it here, we want people to know how good it is. Why aren't they allowed to say that in public? Well, this is, this is what I'm here doing for you now, uh, John, is relaying those messages. You are a board member and you have an impressive CV and a law uh, master's with first class honours, a BA with first class honours from Auckland uh, University. You specialise in complex trust litigation, public and administrative law, relationship property and commercial litigation. You're on the board of the Royal New Zealand Ballet. How many people on the board of the Royal New Zealand Ballet have experience as dancers? Uh, I don't believe any are ex-dancers, not professional dancers. On the board of the Royal New Zealand Ballet is a great wealth of experience in arts management over, I believe, 30 years in total of managing a range of arts organisations, including for, oh, governing, sorry, on a range of organisations, including the New Zealand School of Dance. Uh, so, 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 so sorry, but you see, the thing is, you told me you were here speaking on behalf of the dancers. Neither you nor anyone on the board has ever been a dancer. The dancers aren't allowed to talk to us. Doesn't this seem a bit topsy-turvy to you? Oh, this is why we, as stated right at the beginning of this interview, we are looking at ways to most effectively engage the dancing and artistic voice uh, before the board. And I cannot come on uh, here and say exactly what that's going to look like because what we want to do is hear from those dancers and those artistic support persons ourselves so that they can tell us what we want. I don't want to prejudge what the best outcome would be. Where is Patricia Parker at the moment? Is she in the country? No, she's currently overseas. Uh, okay. There are, the, the, the sorry, dancers sorry, are on so, holiday sorry, at them. Yeah, sorry, you, didn't you tell me earlier that, that people were talking to Patricia Barker and saying how upset they were about uh, the, the, what was being said about the Royal New Zealand Ballet? Corresponding with, uh, sorry if I misspoke on that, it was corresponding with, so it's been emails. As okay, I and where are your new ballet uh, masters who are a couple, a married couple, Nicholas Schultz and Laura McQueen Schultz from Grand Rapids Ballet in Michigan, where are they at the moment? I believe they're uh, heading to New Zealand and will be with us at the end of December. At the end of December. So whilst all of this is going on and a board member is fronting, none of the people who are at the top of the heap, as it were, in terms of uh, creative strategy are in the country. Uh, the executive director is in the country. We also have, remember, I think you're, you're missing out, of course, the other ballet mistress we have, who is uh, Clytie Campbell. And Clytie is a, an example of what we would like to see more of and are aiming as a board to see more of in the Royal New Zealand Ballet. Clytie began her cook Absolutely. Career. She's a, a fine former member of your company, right? Well, she's still a current member of the company. She is one of the ballet mistresses. Mm. Her job was also not uh, openly advertised. She was appointed and Patricia Barker has been delighted to work with her as part of that senior creative team. Isaac Hikaka from the... Royal New Zealand Ballet Board, the only person who was available to talk to us or allowed to talk to us. We are grateful for his availability.